Okay, hello everyone. Uh, welcome back to the video series on FRC Sim for 2016. Um, I have just finished installing and doing a little bit of cleanup on my brand new Ubuntu 14.04 installation. At this point, we're going to go ahead and do a manual install of FRC Sim. Um, there is a uh, tutorial on screen steps which is available for you to look at. And it walks you through the whole manual install. But of course, people always have questions. There's always things that are unclear. So we're going to go through it all together. OK, so understanding dependencies. So it's nice to know that FRC Zoom is really just a collection of other programs, mainly Gazebo. Gazebo is the actual robot simulator. Um, this is what's going to be doing 99.9% .9 of the heavy lifting. And then we also have a couple other packages that are helpful. Um, Eclipse, which you use to build your programs, but Eclipse really isn't doing much. Um, the right versions of Java and GCC, or G++, which is the C++ compiler you'll be using. And a couple other nice things, including the Gazebo plugins, which connect your robot code to Gazebo. OK, so uh, if you watched the last video, you should have um, locked this to the launcher as a process of doing in the process of that video um, but in case you haven't you can just search for it in the launcher here or you can do control alt t anyways so once you open that up the first thing we're going to do is we're going to set up some um, additional repositories so by default ubuntu knows about a bunch of different packages that you can install from a bunch of different repositories but it doesn't know about everything so since 14.04 is now relatively old in terms of um, when it was released. Um, it doesn't have things like Java 8 or G++ 4.9, so we need to add things. So for Ubuntu 14.04, we need these two guys here. Um, those are called PPAs. Basically, they're additional locations which apt, which is the package manager for Ubuntu, will search for packages. Um, I'm typing them by hand here just, you know, just to make it extra challenging. Basically, this is a username um, on Launchpad, and these are these are packages. Um, there's many ways to do it, but basically, you just want to add this thing. Um, if you don't put in the dash y, it'll just ask you to confirm. Um, if you do put in the dash y, which I can do for this one, then it will just do it for you, anyways. Okay, so now we've added those two keys, so we're gonna update. This basically refreshes everything that Ubuntu knows about. So we'll let this run for a minute. Um, so once that finishes, we can go ahead and install G++ 4.9 and OpenJDK 8. Um, you could use the official Java JDK from Oracle, but open source is cool. So we're going to use OpenJDK. All right, this is almost done here. All right, here we go. So if we paste that in, um, pasting, copy and pasting from the terminal is slightly different than what you might be used to. Um, it's Control Shift C and Control Shift V. Um, if you just do Control C, it's just gonna type caret C or caret V. Um, so Control Shift V pastes the actual text from the system clipboard. So we're gonna go ahead and install that. And when we're done, it should give us a more recent version of G++. Assuming that that goes correctly, and you have the correct versions of G++ and Java, uh, you can move on to installing Eclipse. So there's a couple, <coughs> excuse me, a couple lines of code here. Um, wget is a simple command that downloads things. So if you have some file, in this case this tar.gz file, it'll simply download that file. So when this is done, which it looks like it almost is. We will run this. Actually, we can run this in parallel. So copy that, open up a new tab with Control Shift T, Control Shift V to paste, and we'll start that. There we are. OK, now we can check that the version of G++ is correct. OK, so what's interesting is it's telling me that G++ is not installed. Now, we just installed G++. So what, Peter, could be happening? 
Well, you notice if I type g++ 4.9, it works. So this is because of the way programs and commands work um, in Linux and specifically on Ubuntu. Um, if I type g++, it doesn't work, but if I type g++ 4.9, it does. So that's because in this folder, user bin, which is where uh, a lot of programs are stored, in fact, the majority of, of programs that I can run are stored, um, you will see that there is something called g++ 4.9, but nothing called g++. So that's what I was kind of talking about here. Um, when the output of this guy does not say 4.9, which it should. So if you don't see this, you got a problem. So in this case, all I need to do is this command right here. What this is doing is removing any current G++. We don't have any G++, as we know, because it just erred on us. Um, yeah, you can see these are all the programs we have here. So we're just going to run this second line. What this does is it says um, 4.9, GCC 4.9, which we have right here, which does exist. This does not exist. So we're just going to say, all right, well, I want to make 4.9. I'm going to rename it, you know, give it a, a copy, almost like a shortcut to just G++. All right, so now that we've done that, we can run G++ with dash dash version, and it works. Our Eclipse install has also finished. So, or rather, the download has finished. Um, oops. The next thing we're going to do is um, unzip it. If I use ls, I can see that it is downloaded here. And if I copy this in, we can... Um, we can un unzip it right now. Um, okay, there we go. Um, I think there's a typo in this line here. What we're doing here is we're unzipping the file we just downloaded, and then we're going to move it to a new folder called Eclipse in slash opt. Um, this is a conventional directory for um, adding other programs that aren't installed via your package manager, it's pretty common to put them in slash opt. So I'm just going to move this to slash opt. Um, the move command takes this folder and moves it to inside of that folder. So if I check what's in the opt folder, Eclipse is in there. And if I check what's in the Eclipse folder, we'll find a bunch of stuff, including this file. Uh, it's green because it's an executable, uh, and that's the file we want to actually run in order to open Eclipse. So to make things nice, we're going to do one more thing, which is we're going to copy this to user bin, the folder I talked about earlier where all of your um, executable programs should be. So if we do this, we can then just type Eclipse, and it will start. Um, next we have installing the Eclipse plugins. Um, now actually, I shouldn't have closed that because I need this now. This is the same as you've done it on uh, Windows or on any other time you've installed the Eclipse plugins before. Um, it's exactly the same. Um, we're going to do it right now, though, just in case you've forgotten. This is the URL. It's pretty easy to remember. And then we're just going to go to Help, Install New Software, Add, and create something called something like WP Other Plugins, although the name is not significant. And then we'll just add the URL. So we'll go through the motions here just to make sure everyone's on the same page. Add, copy and paste that. And you'll see that this shows up. So we can go ahead and click this and install it. Just follow these things, accept everything, and when this is done, we'll have all the things set up in Eclipse, and we can move on to Gazebo itself. All right, well, while we wait for this to install, we can uh, continue with the Gazebo installation. You can visit gazebosim.org for more detailed instructions, um, but this is copied directly from their website. So we can just run this instead. So if we copy this and run this into a terminal, Control Shift T to open a new tab, Control Shift V to paste. So it does a couple of things. It adds the keys 
for um, packages distributed by OSRF, which is the the group that makes Gazebo. And then it downloads the packages, updates everything, and eventually it just does a sudo apt get install Gazebo 6. Okay, so this is finished, so we can accept all these things and restart Eclipse. Um, you want to say yes to, to this guy over here. Once you've got Gazebo, you'll want to also install the WPIlib plugins. Um, so this is a zip file that contains a whole bunch of libraries um, as well as some other things thrown in there. Um, this is the URL you're going to want to use. So if you can copy this, put that into a terminal, um, or, or you just click on it and the browser will download it for you. So we're going to save that file, and that's going to download. Directions in, in here, uh, when followed, will also work, but I changed some things here, so stay with me. So once we've got that unzipped, uh, we're going to build GZ messages. So we don't need any of this stuff anymore, so we can just rm dash r star. RM, again, removes things, dash R will remove things recursively. So any directories or subdirectories or sub subdirectories. And star just says everything. Everything in this in this current folder. Just delete it. So now everything's gone. But we have what we need because we unzipped it here. So notice where we are. We're at home, your username, WPI lib, and then we've got the simulation folder. In the meantime, we can download our robot models. So you just click this link here and install that. So again, that downloaded to the downloads folder. You can see it's right here. Well, it's not done yet, but when it's done, it will be right here. Um, we're going to want to unzip that, and that's going to contain models and world files for 2014, 2015, and 2016. And you can put those in the uh, home directory, wpilib, and then under simulation, under model and worlds. And you'll see in a second when we finish downloading it. Okay, so we've finished downloading all the models, so we can unzip those. And we're going to want to unzip them into WPILIV simulation. So if we just unzip this here, uh, it's going to give us a couple folders. Um, the first one is this outer folder, so we can just go in here. And then there's these two other folders, models and worlds. Uh, models and worlds can get copied to the home directory, WPILIV simulation using the uh, move command. You could also use cp-r, but since we don't need them in their current location, we can just move them. So we can move worlds to wpilib simulation and do the same thing with models. Okay, so we don't need any of this anymore. So we can rm-r star this. And now we have a nice empty downloads folder. And of course, if we go to WPLib simulation, we'll now see there are models and worlds folders containing all the field models, game pieces, and whatnot for 2014, 2015, and 2016. You can see we've also got a lot of other files here which we can use. Um, those are going to help with things like um, launching programs from here, from you know, from the nice search bar. Um, so we can move on to those now while Gazebo is still downloading. And that's going to be this step here, which is configure your development environment. Um, so again, this is all just for your sanity. It's not technically necessary, um, but I always do it, and I highly recommend it. So if we go back to that terminal, we're basically just going to move um, a couple desktop files. Desktop files are um, small little files that specify um, what programs can be launched from this launcher here as opposed to just typed in the terminal. Um, so if we look at like frcsim.desktop, 
You see, all it does is contains, when this loads, um, it'll contain a few lines that says what application we're running, um, maybe an icon, uh, and a couple other basic pieces of information. Okay, so here we've got some keywords that you can search for with, um, the actual command it's running, and a couple other pieces of information. So we need to copy these to a special location, which is slash user slash share slash applications. Um, and we also need to copy the actual executables simds and frc sim. Okay, so now we're going to make the sim links to the frc sim and simds executables provided in the simulation zip. To do this, we're going to use the ln s command, which creates symbolic links. We're going to use sudo because we need elevated permissions. And we're going to make the links between WPI loop simulation frc sim and user bin frc sim. Enter your password. And then the same thing for simds. Um, for extra speed, you can use control arrow keys to skip through whole words. Just a nice tip. Okay, so now that we've made those files, we should be able to run the programs just by typing from anywhere, you know, from any directory. Here I'm in my home folder. You just type FRC sim or in another tab simds and those two programs will launch for us. Okay, so let's go ahead and copy those desktop files. Um, they're provided for you right here so you can just move them. You want to move Let's start with this to user share applications. And again, you're going to need sudo. But aside from that, you're just moving the files. And the last one is simds. Then we want to move the logo. So if you actually, if we open up that file, we just moved user share applications, simds. You can see it references this logo which is not where it says it is, so we need to move it there. So those directions are down here at the bottom, but basically we need to make a directory for icons for SMDS, and we need sudo for that. And then we just move this icon. It's, it uses copy, but you could move you, you could use move, it doesn't matter. To user share icon SMDS. And again, we need sudo. OK, so we finished installing Gazebo, so we can finish the rest of the manual install. The only other things we have left is building GC messages. Um, so we need these dependencies here, which I have just installed using that command. And then we need to go to the GC messages folder, which is here, make the build directory, go into the build directory, run CMake, and then make install. And that's going to do the build, and you can see it finished. And then it's going to install things. Um, also to the WPI lib simulation directory.